Hello, my name is Amy and I just got off the Milford track and I just thought I would share some of the suggestions I have from when we were on this track. In no particular order, these are the things that I think of that um, I wish we had known or we found out along the way that could really be helpful. For one is, is once you get to the huts, you have to take off your shoes to go into the huts. You have to leave your shoes outside. So people had like uh, flip-flops or um, thin shoes that they took along on the trip so that they could run to the bathroom or into the kitchen hall without having to put on and off their shoes. One of the things that it would have been really good to know is the Mentaro hut, which is the second hut you stay at. It's closer to mile marker 14 than mile marker 13. When we got to mile marker 13, we were ready for the place and it didn't show up for a long time. This would be good information to know. You have an option of boats to be able to take in terms of time frame to go out to Glade Wharf. I'd recommend if you're doing photography to take the first one. That will give you time to walk not only to the first hut, but then drop your bags and then go a little bit further down the track. We went three miles down the track afterwards to be able to shoot while the light was still decent in the evening. And that way in the morning, the next day, you can get up early before the sun comes up and hike the three miles. So that by the time the sun's coming up good, you will already be to the place where you were before. So you have plenty of time to make to the next hut. We found delightful was they have this uh, South Island Robin. It's black and has a white belly and it is a very inquisitive bird and it would often fly up close to you on the trail and I wanted it to come closer. I found out later one of the things that you can do is if you scratch the ground with your foot it will come to investigate the ground that you have exposed and so they'll come right up to you. They were on my camera bag, they were all around my feet it was really fun. I loved seeing them. There are two side trails that you can take uh, at the beginning, the first two days of the hikes, and I recommend both of them. One of them's a wetlands trail. It says it's two minutes. Now that's two minutes for somebody who doesn't have a, photogra uh, a camera in their hand. And the other one is the Hidden Lake Trail. Um, we did that one on the day it was not raining for us. Um, if you have to do the out and back, the McKinnon experience, you'll see that uh, exit twice. I would take it the time that it's not raining because uh, the lake when we were there was mirror smooth with the waterfall dripping down to it. It was gorgeous. One of the things I will say is that you want to make your pack as light as it can possibly be. This trail, uh, I just, I would say I'm in fairly good shape. I go to the gym five days a week. Um, to train for this, I uh, climbed the revolving stair climber for 30 minutes, and that was still hard for me to do this trail. So I'd recommend getting in really good shape and do some hiking with a backpack on to be ready, and then make your pack as light as you can. In terms of clothing, I'd really recommend wearing wool socks because my feet got soaking wet. Even though I waterproofed my shoes, my feet got soaking wet. Once I stepped in water that was ankle deep, my feet were soaked. By having wool socks on, my feet did not get so cold. And I also had merino wool shirt and merino wool pants. So I recommend those. Again, if you get wet, they won't get cold. And the other thing that I recommend in terms of the clothing is the sand gnats are bad, so if you have a thin layer of clothing that covers up your arms and your legs completely, you'll be a lot more comfortable and you won't have to put on so much bug insect propellant. Now, the ranger says that the deepest water she's had to go through was mid-chest deep on her. So be prepared that you may have to walk through some deep water. Like I say, fortunately for us, on the while we were hiking, we had 76 millimeters or about three inches of water and on the trail with that much rain it was uh, about ankle deep for us. However, it can get a lot deeper than that. The good thing to notice is the day after it rained the water cleared out really quickly so it was not as bad the second day as I was expecting it to be after one good day of a lot of rain. 
walking stick saved me. Saved me. The uh, first part of the uh, hike is very level, but then with the pack on my back, going up hills and down hills, my knees got really tired. And so it really helped to have a hiking stick in both hands to help me negotiate those inclines and declines. They get a lot of rain on the Milford track, so you need to make sure you just embrace the rain. We, like I said, had three inches of rain on our second day of hiking. And actually that was a perfect day for hiking because that's when we were starting to go through the pass. And what's really neat about that area is the, um, the walls of the, the canyon you're going through. It, it almost hemorrhages waterfalls. Everywhere you look becomes a waterfall all up and down and it just became beautiful. And the creeks and streams that you were going, they had bridges to go, walking bridges to go over, they became full. The very next day when it stopped raining, those, those were not full anymore and not near as pretty. So in many ways, it's prettier if it's raining. So uh, I also think that even in the greener parts of the track, it, um, it saturated the colors and it just became prettier. So enjoy the rain if you get it. And now that we've talked about the rain, we were given a plastic bag to put inside of our backpacks and then put our gear in that. Uh, everything that we put inside the plastic bag inside the backpack stayed dry. But we put in the bottom of our pack our uh, sleeping bag and our sleeping bag liner. And those got soaking wet on the day it rained. So I recommend having dry bags or a plastic bag that all your gear goes in that goes into your backpacks to make sure that it stays dry. Because we had a backpack cover on, still everything got soaking wet that was not in a plastic bag. So for the sand flies, there's a product called Bonjello, B-O-N-J-E-L-O, -E that we had heard about before the trip. So we ordered it special for this trip and I did get bit by sandflies, and I have to tell you, sandflies, they, they leave blood. They are not playing, and then the bite itches really badly. So the Bongello you can put on after you get bit, and it immediately got rid of the itch, which was wonderful. One of the things I strongly recommend is bringing a headlamp. I brought a headlamp and then while I was on the plane, my headlamp got turned on accidentally on the plane. And my headlamp worked for mm, five minutes and then it was done. So make sure you bring spare batteries. And another thing that I noticed was some of the, the people who were hiking the trek had the headlamps that have the red light on it. The red light was really nice for, you're staying in huts and everybody's, well, not, there's a couple of different huts but every, many people are staying in the same room. So it was nice when people got up before everybody else or went, came in after everybody else to be able to use the red light on the headlamp to be able to keep from disturbing others. On the track, they are being very diligent about trying to get rid of um, uh, the non-native animals that are interfering with the bird life that is there. So they have tracks, um, traps that are along the trail and there are um, video uh, tracking video cams along the trail there are a lot of them so if you have to pee along the trail I would highly recommend look around at the looking around at the base of the trees to make sure that you're not on candid camera one of the things that you can be lucky enough to see is a Kia and what I'd recommend it's kind of like a, a parrot that they have here um, it makes a very distinctive sound, so before you go, listen to the sound of a Kia so that if you hear that sound, you'll know to start looking for one. We were lucky enough to see one because someone else pointed them out to us as we were going down the trail. So while you're on the trail, um, there are kiwis on the trail, but there are not very many of them. It's a brown bird, but there's also another brown bird that's a wicca. And the wicca are pretty common. So if you think you've seen a kiwi, you've probably seen a wicca. A wicca has a tail and a short beak, whereas the kiwi doesn't have a tail and has a longer curved beak. So 
just look twice and think before you say you've seen a kiwi, because it's probably unlikely that's what you've really seen. Just outside of the Clinton hut at night, if you go out and go left onto the main trail or go like you're going further onto the trail, on the left, so the opposite side of the river, there are some overhanging um, rocks and vegetation. And underneath that vegetation, if you look at night or early in the morning, if you go early, you can see glowworms. We got to see them and it was really fun. So uh, when you're hiking from one hut to the next, they want you to be at the hut by the time they have the ranger hut talk. Uh, there's a ranger that lives out at each of the huts. And one of them had the hut talk at the, Clint the Clinton one was at 7.15 and the one at the Mentara hut was at 7.30. At the Clinton one, there was also a talk about the local flora and fauna that was at 5.15. So you'd want to arrive by that time if you want to participate in those talks. So one of the things you need to know is everything you pack in, you have to pack out. So I'd recommend taking an extra bag so that you can put all your trash in it. So that when you leave, that you have it, something nice and tidy. Otherwise, you have a little bit of trash everywhere. One bag makes it so much easier. In case it rains, I recommend that you have a hat with a bill on it. That way, when you pull up your rain hood, that hood won't flap in your face. If you have a hat with a bill on it, it keeps the rain out of your eyes and the rain hood from flapping in your face. So I'm not just immediately off the trail now, but I had a few more ideas that I thought would be really helpful for you. So one of them is, is that there really is no phone service on the trail. And it, it, on the boat that you take over, and even on the bus that you take to get to the boat, there's very little phone service. So uh, we packed our, our phones. Now, if you use it as your camera on the trail, as a lightweight camera, that's a good idea, but don't expect to be able to use your phone. We also uh, packed in um, uh, external power sources to be able to power our phone. And those were heavy and we didn't hardly use our phones at all. So it's not worth the time to pack that kind of stuff in. So one of the things that we did that I was really glad we did is we got our backpacking gear and our, our food for the hike from Easy Hike. Easy Hike made it really easy. Uh, when I was looking online for renting gear, there were two companies and Easy Hike was the one that ended up calling me back and emailing me back as I, as I needed and the other one I never heard back from. So I recommend them highly. Their gear was in excellent condition. It was, they dropped our gear off the night before at our lodging for us, and then it was easy to return it as well. Um, they made the trip easy, and the food that they provided was good, and we had choices of food. I really recommend them. If you rent your gear from Easy Hike, one of the things that you need to know is that you can change the shoulder to waist height. It's usually Velcro on the backpacks to uh, make it easier or more comfortable to carry your height, your backpack. Um, you want to get it right because um, I really kept messing with the height of my waist belt and where it was positioned on me as I hiked and I still ended up with bruising on my hips. So uh, getting a good fit of your backpack is really important to make this hike better. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is water on the trail. So um, there are mountain streams, literally glacier fed, coming down to the trail from your left hand side as you hike in and your right hand side as you hike out if you have to uh, go up and turn around and come back like we did. Uh, so what we did is we took enough water to fill our water bottles and then we filled them along the way, way to, with the trails to our left. There's a river to your right as you hike in. Um, that way the water is more likely to be cleaner. Um, at the lodges, the lodges, that, the huts that you stay in, it says don't drink the water, but the ranger at our first hut says she drinks the water all the time. Um, it does say there that you should bowl the water first. Just a precaution, we did bowl the water first, but um, I also drank the water too and I'm still alive. So I think it's gonna be okay. 
Um, so I wouldn't pack in all the water for the whole trip. I'd pack in the water that you could use for a day and then you can refill it along the way. So one, one of the things on the trip that you want to make sure you have is good rain gear because the likelihood is if it rains 265 days out of 365 days there, you're likely going to get rained on. We had three inches of rain one day. So um, we noticed a big difference between people who had good rain gear and people who didn't have good rain gear. We have Arcteryx Ar Ar uh, rain gear and it kept us dry but the people who had thinner rain gear or rain gear that has that white coating on the inside they got wet so you need to make sure you have a raincoat especially one that when you put pressure on it it doesn't uh, seep water through because you'll be soaked um, so I, I get really good rain gear before you go on this hike so one of the things we had questions about was uh, the sanitizing stations there was a sanitizing bucket when you got off the boat that you had to step into before you went on your hike. But then along the trail, there were more sanitizing stations and we weren't sure whether we had to sanitize our boots again all along the trail or not. The uh, ranger at our first hut said that those sanitizing stations are specifically for fishermen that come in to fish along the river and not necessarily for the hikers who've already cleaned their boots when they got off the boat. If you go in and out of the river, you need to sanitize your boots again, but otherwise just sanitize your boots when you get out of the boat and then you're good to go for the rest of the hike. Uh, as photographers, one of the challenges was having uh, enough battery life for our cameras. So what my partner Guy decided to do was not take the grip on his camera because that added significantly more weight. And then he made sure that he turned off the, the camera between every shot so that uh, he was conserving battery life. And that ended up being the way to uh, conserve batteries so that he really only went through one battery in three days, which is remarkable because we have Fuji cameras and they have little teeny tiny batteries that don't last very long. So, um, you, you just want to do everything you can to make your gear as light as possible. So that not using your grip and conserving your battery life on your camera as best as you can will make your trip easier. I will say that um, sand flies leave welts. So if you uh, have thumb holes on your, on your sleeves, or on your sleeves, make sure you use them because you want to cover up as much skin as possible because these itch. I mean, like really itch bad. So a critical, critical thing for the hike is shoes. <laughs> Stop it. A critical, my boyfriend is making uh, faces at me, sorry. Um, a critical thing for the hike, critical, I mean it is so critical, is your shoes because you're going to hike a long way. Um, I did not have, because of a couple of problems I had, my best hiking shoes with me when I hiked the trail. I know that sounds insane, but I ended up uh, with, I'm probably going to lose my toenail on my big toe. And my boyfriend had his regular hiking boots and ended up with a humongous blister underneath his foot. Um, I. I think that's because we ended up getting having to walk through water pretty quickly on the trail and we both had wet feet hiking. Um, so just be ready for all sorts of situations and make sure that you have waterproofed your boots and the higher the boots are the better to keep, um, to keep the water from getting in your shoes. Um, I hope that's helpful too. Um, some other ideas. The trail. What? Um, hike with, uh, out having to worry about all the details before him. E e easy hike. Higher took easy hike. Shoot. Let's start over.